Do, 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 do. Sam, what do you? We got you on twice. <laughs> oh, I, I don't know what the hell I did. <laughs> I've never seen that before. Uh, I don't know. Can I remove one? There, I think I. I think I did it. Okay. <clears throat> all right <clears throat> all right cool um well the for sam you're just starting but uh this is week number two so i guess like let's just start off uh i would i would like to know how you guys have done this week uh like do you have how did it go what did you experience did things make sense and uh do you have any questions about anything Everything's been going great for me. Um, I've been hitting uh, kind of like a cardio session in the morning, and then I'm hitting weights at night. Um, honestly, I've dropped 4.2 pounds. Um, I've got lots of energy. This week? This week, yeah. Awesome. So, so uh, I, I think it's just the, the extra cardio in the morning that's really kind of helping out when fasted state. So. But I, I don't know. I'm doing, uh, let's see, I'm working every other night doing the Wim Hof breathing. And then I'm hitting uh, the red light therapy every night. Um, and I haven't got an ice plunge in yet, but uh, that's coming up this week. So um, even if even if you don't get like a full plunge, like a cold shower is like there's a uh, Huberman just put out a, a, some research on cold showers, like three to five minutes um, in or a cold plunge for about the same length of time, like usually one to three minutes, a little bit less time with the, with a cold plunge. Um, but that is, that is eliciting basically the same like adrenaline response and cortisol response as, as the cold plunge. So if you can't get like the, the full cold plunge, it's not the end of the world, but as long as you can, you start to like put in some, some exposure work, right? Like the red light therapy is good. Um, cold is good. And then if you can get some heat, uh, also worked in there, unless you live in Florida, then you don't have to worry about it. <laughs> so that, does that make sense though? Okay. Um, cool. Four, four pounds down. All right. So, um, I'm also going to comment on the, uh, the, the fasted state cardio that you're talking about. I'll, I'll talk about more of that in a second. Um, all right. What else? Josh, how, how are we doing, man? I'm doing pretty good. A lot of the uh, workouts that are on the program, I can't do just yet. Like chin ups, I can only do like two or three. Um, but yeah, I'm down uh, probably two or three pounds, uh, sticking to the uh, nutrition and um, doing pretty good. Awesome. So don't get, don't get super frustrated if there's stuff that like you can't do yet, or it's like, man, this is just not, I'm just not there. Right. That's totally fine. Right. There's honestly, there's stuff even that I program in where I'm like, my elbows a mess. My hips are fake. Like there's some days where it's like, it just ain't happening. So I have to modify and, and, uh, and learn how to like adapt to who I am today. Right. And it's a fine line between like, are you giving yourself kind of an out to like be a wimp about it? Or is it just something where it's like, no, we're not ready to do that yet. And that's not smart. So it's a balancing act with that. Um, but, uh, but that's, that's why, that's why I'm here. That's why like you're part of a group is you can ask questions. I can ask questions in the group. If you ever get stuck or you're like, ah, I don't know, I'm on the fence about this. Um, like just, just ask and you'll get an answer from either me or somebody else. Um, that'll probably be just probably the same thing that I would say anyway. So, um, and then don't discount also don't discount, like just, just move. Right. So like, depending where you're at with training, um, like just moving and hitting 10,000 steps a day is, is going to be good, man. Um, the biggest factors here are nutrition, lifestyle, and then training, right? Training's like the third most important, still important, but, but if we were going to cut one of these things out for you, I'd say like, don't worry about training, just move, just get more movement in and, and the lifting weights and that, that, that stuff will come. 
right? That stuff will come. Does that make sense? Okay. All right. Um, all right. Before we move on to um, fasted stuff, are you guys tracking any calories? Are you tracking macros? Are you tracking nutrition? Or are you just kind of like working on food quality? I'm doing both. Uh, so I'm trying to stick to what we ended up talking about in the first, uh, I think, first session or whatever. Uh, the white rice, how much I love that. And uh, the red meats, uh, fish, and um, staying away from seed oils. But then I'm definitely getting in my two servings of vegetables, two servings of fruits. And uh, just really focusing on that uh, and making sure I hit my protein. Um, I really haven't been tracking my carbs as much as I used to. Uh, but I definitely have been uh, making sure I hit my protein numbers and uh, making sure I'm, I'm, you know, at my calories. Okay, cool. So where are, well, I'll just kind of like put it this way, right? So um, if you, if you want to go to a deficit, right? So if like you're at maintenance, right? And if you're looking to go into a deficit, um, the way that we're going to do that for the next few weeks, it's like, a, it's like a, a, a mini cut is kind of what it is. But basically what you've done the past week, those are your A days. Okay. So <laughs> A days are, um, and did you do Thunder Bro? Yeah. So it's basically the same as that. Like that's actually a really good template. This guy kind of borrowed that, but uh, there's, there's different ways you can cut down to like a 20% right deficit. That's really all you need to do in order to create like weight loss. If you're coming from a state of surplus or maintenance, right. And you go down 20% on just one, one time a week, right. Once every three days, then uh, that's going to take your overall load down about 20%. Right. <clears throat> and so we go maintenance day, maintenance day, deficit day. So AA and then our B days are 20% down. Um, and uh, in, if you get into the coursework, there is a whole, the whole worksheet where I, I'm probably due to redo it. Uh, but like where I kind of work through the calculations based on like a 200 pound male. Um, so does, does that, does that make sense? You, you still tracking on how to do that? Yeah, no, that's, that's actually where I got my original numbers from and stuff. And, and uh, the one thing that I, that I changed with this compared to some of the other things that I've ever done is, is. Uh, it was something actually that you told me back at the gym was, is that, you know, uh, if, if you want to, uh, to, to, to make a change, you actually have to do it. Uh, yeah, you have to get uncomfortable. Uh, and, uh, every time I keep thinking, oh, I'll just go back to doing things the way I did it before. It's like, no, that didn't work, dumbass. So yeah, just how about, how about you do, do what Anthony says and just do it. All right. <laughs> Yeah. Well, cool. Yeah. You got it. You have to execute, you know, um, like talking about it and thinking about it and, you know, like hypothesizing about it only takes you so, so far. And now you got to put it into practice. Um, but, uh, all right. So that, so th for this week, if you're going down into a deficit, right. So you do a maintenance day, a day, a day, and that's basically baselined out what we already did. So two of those follow that up with a third day where we're going 20% down. And then you to do that, you just have to recalculate the numbers and subtract the percentage. So, um, and then it's kind of cool, like you go A, A, B, back to an A day. And so it it creates this kind of like this up and down. So it's not like a, a, a huge shock. And that's where when we're going into deficits, like most of us screwed up badly because you think you need to make this wholesale change and it really doesn't need to be. Uh, it, it, because it's got to be sustainable. So you want to make small cut, small cut, small cut over several weeks. And then all of a sudden, like you're down and, and it works really well. Um, the best way to do a cut is to get in progressively and aggressively get in and then get back out. That's why I like these four week systems, these four week cuts. They're, they're pretty nice because it allows you that like four weeks, get in, get kind of back to maintenance and then you can attack it again if you really wanted to. Um, all right. So there's that Josh, where are you at with, are you tracking numbers or just food quality right now? Yes, sir. Trafficking numbers. You know, it, it's hard to get to the, uh, um, 2200. I think you gave me, and I was going to ask when we're cutting by 20%, is that cutting uh, protein as well? Yes, that's cutting everything. But with okay. that said, if, all right, so here's the thing, right? So if 2,200 calories, right? 
is where we should be shooting for. And you're like, dude, that's way more than what I'm eating. Then what we need to start doing then is reverse dieting, right? So that might mean that it's not time to go into a deficit yet, uh, depending on how many calories you're getting and how many calories you have been getting. So for example, if you're eating 1200 calories and we really should be closer to like 2000 or, or 2,500, then that means you're already in like a thousand calorie a day deficit. And if you're not losing weight with a thousand calorie deficit, then adding it to be 1200 calories probably is not going to do it either. You know what I mean? So it might be better at that point to maybe focus on food quality, increasing protein, and, and we might not be ready for a cut yet. And that's where, that's where sometimes people get wrapped around the axle too, is they want to get too aggressive too quick. And it's like, it's, it's not time yet, or you've been doing this for too long and your body has adapted differently. So then we need to like readjust things and kind of fix things. So the whole notion of, and I just talked to somebody about this, uh, might've been on the podcast actually with Tyler. <laughs> so um, I just talked uh, to him about that and a deficit, a strict, like just math deficit will work if, and only if everything is, is working properly. Right. So if your hormones are good, your, your sleep is good. Everything is on par, right? You're in your twenties. Like all the things are going your way. Then just taking calories away will probably work. But when we're a little bit older, maybe, you know, dealing with some health stuff, maybe dealing with some hormone stuff, maybe dealing with some shift work stuff like that, that, that deck looks different. So it might not work the same way. Is it, does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Cool. Um, so I guess fill me in like where where are you hitting with protein and like how hungry are you on a day to day basis? Um, so today was the first day that I really felt like I was hungry that I wasn't eating enough. But the last, you know, Monday through Friday, I didn't even feel hungry like I wanted to eat more. So and I just need to get some more get creative in the proteins and the the carbs that kind of stuff so how much how much protein are you getting in uh i'm trying to get that 200 usually it's like 180 or so okay that's not bad yeah i mean and what were you doing before that or was, was it even close to 180 oh i i wouldn't even know i mean it was like mcdonald's and fast food and pizza right. and... cool cool so uh have you taken all like how's your how's your food quality is it is it a lot better did you change it all out are you still doing some like what are you doing with that no starting uh monday i changed it to just what what you put on the list so um that's been a little tough but uh yeah it seems to be working yeah well all right so here's the thing if you're hitting 100 180 grams of protein still shoot for 200 still kind of track your other numbers so you know where you're at but dude i would not even stress about like like cutting or building, just stay consistent. You know, okay. like you cleaned up your food quality a ton, a ton, and that's already showing progress. Like, let's just keep shooting for that 200 mark of protein. Keep tracking your other numbers so they know where we're at and keep moving, keep working out and okay. keep like, you know, to an extent, it's like, we don't have to, we don't have to always be like moving in the exact same way as everybody else. You know, sometimes if it ain't broke, don't fix it. You know, so it's kind of like, um, like with that, it's like lowest hanging fruit. So if we don't have to take you into a deficit, like, and it's working, then let's wait, let's wait and make sure that you are ready for the deficit because going into a deficit, going into a cut is a stress, right? You're stressing right. your system. You're stressing your body. Like it's a stress and, uh, you can only do that for so long before it's overstressed to the system. Right. Right. But you need to be very calculated about about like where you do your cuts and how you do your cuts. You know, like you got you got to really look at that um, so that you can you can be most effective with it. Cool. Good deal. <clears throat> All right. Um, so let's talk about some fasted stuff and some stuff that that like I've been playing with currently and that. Um, that uh, that I'm just seeing more research come out about like not intermittent fasting per se, but intermittent fasting. Um, 
So, so uh, it's like res time restricted feeding, right? So I was just listening to an, another podcast with Huberman and so reading some other studies on from that Lane Norton posted. Um, and they're, they're, they're uh, mice studies, but they're showing that it, they are drastically improving. I wish I could remember the stats offhand, the longevity and lifespan of these mice that are going on a 12, 10 fasted, um, state, right? So they're fasting for 12 hours and all of their eating is compressed into a 10 hour window, which really isn't un unmanageable, right? When you start looking at that, um, like 10 hours to eat, like that's that's a pretty broad window now once you have to extend it to like you know a lot of people will do intermittent fasting they'll do 16 8 so 16 hours fasted eight hours feeding and like to be totally honest a lot of that is just restricting your feeding window to a shorter amount of, of time so that kind of jedi mind tricks you into eating less just because you have less time to eat so it just tricks you into going into a deficit that's mostly why it works right um but when we're talking about like the stuff that, you know, getting your protein in, making sure like you're, we're actually like, maybe we need to reverse up, you know, that kind of stuff. An eight hour window is hard to get 200 grams of protein in sometimes. So having that extra two hours is, is actually really helpful. Um, and then, you know, let's say you cut off food at 10 o'clock, like your last meal is at like nine 30. So you finish eating at like 10, let's say. So then you don't eat again until what 12 the next day so you basically just skip breakfast go through to lunch and then you have your first meal then and then everything else is the same you might have to compress two meals into one but uh it's really it's it's pretty manageable uh and it allows you to kind of hit that fasted cardio in the morning um and really like there's tons of research lane norton posts about this all the time uh that whether you're doing fasted cardio or fed cardio, it doesn't really matter as long as your numbers are making sense and you're not in a surplus. If you're not in a surplus, it doesn't matter either way. Um, what, what it does matter though is personal preference. Like if you enjoy it and you feel like you get more out of it, then it will be more effective. So um, like, and I'm the same way. I, I know that it doesn't matter from a fat loss standpoint. If I eat a little bit of oatmeal before I go and train uh, or, or not. It, it's not going to matter either way, but I like it better because I, I just don't have, I don't have stuff weighing me down. Like I don't feel heavy. So, um, for that standpoint, like it's better for me to go fasted because it's enjoyable and that's it. It's more comfortable. And if I'm more comfortable, I'm going to have a better workout. So it's just a comfort thing and a preference thing. <laughs> as long as you're tracking your macros and tracking your stuff, uh, the way that the way that the program is laid out, then it doesn't matter if you have 25 grams of carbs and protein before or zero, it, it's going to, it's going to all even out. So um, the only thing that it would affect is your fasting window, right? So if you're trying to go 12 hours between, you know, 12, 10, as far as the fasting ratios, then uh, adding in anything is going to take you out of a fasted state for a little bit of time. You might go right back into it quickly as you burn it up. So it might not be a huge deal, but uh, it will take you out. So just kind of stuff to think about there. Cool. All right. Um, okay. You guys have any questions that kind of like prompted from, from, uh, from this? Well, actually, Anthony, I did have one thing. Uh, so I, I, I got with a couple of our friends to find out uh, about some shoulder rehab. Uh, one of the exercises this week was a, 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 a good amount of push-ups. Um, I ended up making a mistake and uh, trying my kid's hoverboard and uh, dislocated my shoulder. Oh. Uh, so uh, I'm, I'm kind of rehabbing right now from that. So if there's anything that uh, you have suggestions wise, um, doing push-ups right now, things I actually really enjoy, I'm, I'm burnt. Or, uh, it, it, I feel like it's like it's a rock being like shredded over top of or, uh, a rope being shredded over top of a rock. OK, so uh, so I got with Alan. Alan's rehabbed his shoulder a couple of times. So I'm, I'm, I'm I was like he said, definitely reach out to Anthony. He's been through a lot of rehab. I'm sure he's got. some. <laughs> yes, yeah. that's um, yeah. So when it came out, did it come all the way out and have to be reduced back into socket? 
Yeah, no, Heath ended up fixing it for me. So it ended up, it popped all the way out. All right, I was misery. Heath ended up coming in early and taking care of me. Um, and then um, I, I just kind of did, uh, I got with a PT for a little while and uh, did some of the rebanded like therapy that they had there. But uh, I, I don't know if it's because I didn't continue with it past six months or what, but it's, it's just, like I said, I haven't done a lot of, of chest movements and then even reducing oh. weight that it just is killing me. Okay. So, so this is not like a new thing you did today, right? This is an old injury. Uh, this is a year and a half old injury. Oh, okay. Okay. I thought I was thinking you just did it like this weekend. I was like, what? Oh, no, not this time. Yeah. No. All right. <laughs> All right. So with that, right. So if it was all the way out and it needed to be reduced back into socket and like all that stuff. So when that happens, like, uh, you know, I'm sure you know this, but I'm going to tell this for everybody, right. It's good information to have. Um, like here's your shoulder blade, right. It, it kind of sits here like this and it moves and, and like it'll wing and do all sorts of cool stuff. Right. And then your, your humerus like sits like in front of it, sort of underneath it. So it's like a ball and socket. And then it's got your, your your clavicle your collarbone rolls over top of that and kind of sits in the middle and it does all sorts of cool stuff so it's like a like a ball and socket joint but it's not because it's not like your hip like your hip is encapsulated in a socket your shoulder is just floating right it's just floating so it's like a pseudo ball and socket so when you dislocate it uh it everything like rips because there's tons of ligaments and rotator cuff muscles and and all kinds of stuff right so when it pops all the way out like when i did mine uh when i popped mine all the way out and it was full like full dislocation hanging there like lethal weapon um like it sounded like velcro in my ears like like everything tearing hey you stop it so uh, so from that standpoint when they reduce it back in and uh and it's got all that damage it's like a sprained ankle uh but it's like a million times worse so you have to do a ton of soft tissue on it and and make sure that we're working range of motion back in so you're probably just all gummed up and it, it just and, and your body does a really good job especially with your shoulder about restricting the movement so that it doesn't get hurt again so yeah. that's why that happens when it's like man i pop my right shoulder out this one works fine and this one's like like there, you know, um, so the banded distractions, like the old school Kelly stuff, the, the, uh, the underhand, like stretching through getting that external rotation, doing the internal banded stuff. Um, like those, those would be huge. Those would be real huge. And then, um, and then I would, I'll send you some stuff or, you know what, I'll just post it in the, um, in the Facebook group. The, um, there's a lot of kettlebell work that's fantastic for shoulder stability so there's a dude i've trained with a couple of times jeff martone he's like old school uh crossfit kettlebell dude like way back in the day and his shoulders are absolute garbage and he, he like he'll be sleeping and they'll pop out but he just doubles down on all of his kettlebell work and it keeps him keeps him rocking and rolling um uh what is it the arm bar stretch um <clears throat> arm bar stretch i'll post i'll post some videos on that um, I'll post that probably tomorrow. I can get in and post that. That one is fantastic. So prior to any pressing overhead or, um, bench press, floor press, push ups, like I would do, I would do three sets of five on both sides, arm bar stretch. And it's really, it's kind of like not a stretch. It's more of an activation. So you lay down flat, like you're doing a Turkish get up and all you're doing is pressing the belt up while you're rotating all the way around and then coming back. So you press up, rotate flat, five seconds, bring it back down. You do that five times. And that one is really, really good for um, like articulating like thoracic spine and like, like uh, retraction and protraction of the shoulder blade and kind of like working through some of that crap. And it, the reason I like it for like shoulder subluxations or dislocations, so whether it's a minor like pop or a full dislocation um, is, uh, is, because it like it helps you make a connection that like your shoulder is going to be safe and stable, you know. Um, so it it's a really good way to make the connection. Like my shoulder's not going to pop out, you know. So does that make sense? Those are the ones I would focus on. And no, that was just one of the ones where I'm I'm sitting there and I'm uh, 
I'm, I'm in my head. I write a little bit of pain's not that bad, but you know what? This one wasn't a little. So uh, yeah, I was like, all right, I'm gonna get this checked out. I want to get this fixed so that I can do the movements. So yeah, yeah, and like back when I used to do CrossFit a ton, um, like overhead squats, right? Especially teaching it, like overhead squats. Uh, every once in a while, there'd be somebody that'd be like, I feel like my shoulder is going to explode when I do these. That's one where it's like, you got to pay attention to your shoulders. If your shoulders are screaming at you to stop and it feels like pressure, 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 something's weird in here. And it's like, you might not want to push through that one. Like you might want to actually listen to it and say, yeah, I'm going to slow this one down because if it feels sketchy with your shoulders, it is. And if it feels like it's going to pop out, it's gonna. At some point, it might not be right then, but at some point doing whatever it is you're doing, it's going to pop. It's kind of like jujitsu, right? When you get, when you get put in a Kimura, like if you feel it going, there's a reason they say tap early, right? Because it pressure. Oh, I feel like this is going to pop. If I let this dude keep cranking, it's going to, this is what it's designed to do. So you have to pay attention to that kind of stuff and like tap out, right? <laughs> So I'll uh, post that. I'll post that video tomorrow. God. All right. What do we got? It's nine o'clock. So we've been on for about 30 minutes. All right. Um, what else you guys got? Anything? <coughs> no, I don't think so. Um, just, yeah, I was going to say I'm hitting my protein, intermittent fasting. I'm, I, I, I do it within that eight hour window and I just hit it a few times, but, uh, you know, first thing at 5.30 in the morning is when I get in that first, uh, like, long cardio run. Oh, that's what it was. Uh, you know, uh, on, like, Lips and Irons plan, the Thunderbird plan, it was, uh, you know, like, 15 minutes, all right, build up and stuff like that. So, because I still do the races, um, I've been hitting it kind of longer and longer um, because I've got, you know, my 10K coming up, and then I've got, you know, the 21 at the end of summer. Um, so, is there a, a time limit that I should be stopping? Uh Cause there's, you know, there's the times when I'll hit my like 22 K row or I'll, you know, run like, uh, like seven miles or whatever, or uh, is there something that'll be detrimental to what we're doing here during this time period? I mean, it's, it's just base aerobic work. And that's really, as long as you're maintaining like a low intensity, like a nasal breathing pace, you're probably not going to be overtraining in this. Um, so now with that said, you'll probably be fine, but if you feel start, if you start to feel like really run down, especially as you go into a deficit, right? As you go into a deficit, like the, the whole thing is designed to deplete you, right? That's what it's supposed to do. We were trying to take body weight and body fat away. So you're going to feel run down. Um, so because of that, like you just got to pay attention, right? Pay attention to, to, to how you're feeling. And if you need to take away some of the like conditioning, uh, it, like the like the circuit style stuff or back some of that down like you can do that that's fine especially if you're if you're really doing a lot of work on the front end of the day um like hit your weights do your stuff or you know to like keep your your hormones tracking and like force production and, and all that kind of stuff that like lifting weights is going to give you but like monitor where you're going to have to take things away you know if you start feeling run down and if you don't feel, start feeling run down things are feeling good and your shoulders getting better like maybe don't worry about it um and then it just the as far as like well how long should i go in the mornings go as long as you feel like it you know as long as you've got time for it you know um you know i i would probably shut it down at like 45 minutes that that might be like why are you going beyond that you know but yeah so does that does that answer your question yeah, that definitely does. It's just one of, the, like I said, it was one of those ones where, uh, you know, like what I got in at the gym with the whole like rowing and stuff like that, I just get in a groove and it's, it's all nasal breathing. It just, it's fun. And then I realized, you know, it's been an hour, an hour and a half and I'm going, Oh, I can go a little bit longer. I can go a little bit longer. Uh, and then I realized my ass is numb, but you know, that's about it. All right. So. Yeah. I mean, if you're doing, if you're doing 20 minutes plus like 20 to 45 minutes, like two, three times a week, that's probably enough with that. And you could probably um, allocate that volume for different things. You know, like you could do a little bit more intense interval work. Uh, you could do like long intervals, short intervals, and then keep those like basically they're called they're called tempo days is typically what they're called. Like a long duration, like tempo day, like 30 to 45 minutes, like, you know, gear one nasal breathing. 
So if you're doing two or three of those a week, then you can start to do other types of aerobic work on the other two or three days. And that's, I, I would probably, I would probably skew the volume a little bit more towards that. Um, that's just cause I get bored easily though. So. Cool. All right. So where are we at this week? You guys know what you're doing. You know what's going on. Ready to get after it. All right. Yep. Cool. Um, okay. There was some stuff that I was going to say about, um, about like, like stuff other than just the nuts and bolts of training, but I think I'm going to wait and I'll post it this week as some content in the group. So, um, look for that. All right, dudes. Well, that's all I got. Unless you've got anything else. Actually, I had one more. Do you want me to send you my. Say it uh, again. My uh, my DEXA scan. Do you want me to send that to you or just hold on to the end? If you got it, send it. I'd love to see it. So. Well, all right, dudes. Hit me up if you need anything and uh, go forth and conquer. Take care, Anthony. Thank you. Yep. Later, dudes.